From the Toronto Star, I'm Rudy Mudder, and this matters. The truth is out there, even if it feels harder to find during some recent elections. In this quick and crunched campaign, there are many issues vying for attention, from pandemic recovery and the economy to climate change, from health care and reconciliation with Indigenous peoples, and much more, all being brought up to the leaders of Canada's competing parties. We live in a world full of misinformation, and due to some of that being spewed by people in power, fact-checking has become a vital tool to hold people accountable for what they say. Lex Harvey has been reporting for the Star, and for the past month has been fact-checking the party leaders on the campaign trail. She joins us now to discuss where they ended up on the truthiness scale. Lex, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. Lex, let's start off with why we decided to do this. Before we get into a few specifics, let's talk about your methodology, how you did it, and what you covered. So we decided to do this in part because we wanted to see how much trends of political dishonesty, which we've seen probably most famously with Donald Trump in the U.S., had reached Canada. And the second big part of this was we know that Canadian voters want to be able to trust their leaders, and we wanted to be able to help voters stay as informed as possible throughout the campaign by keeping an accurate public record. And then, of course, we wanted to also hold our politicians accountable. So in order to fact check all leaders as rigorously as possible, I focused on one leader per week, starting with the party defending the fewest seats, the Green Party, and ending most recently with the incumbent Liberal leader, Justin Trudeau. So during each leader's week, I listened to everything they said publicly, and I judged every statement of fact they made as true, false, or a stretch. So I did that by sifting through statistics, reading reports, calling experts, a lot of experts, to see what I could find. So we all know the difference between true and false claims, but there are also stretches. And I love the term dishonesty density. Can you explain what that means? Yeah, so we developed the dishonesty density as a way to compare between the leaders because we knew that they might speak for different amounts of time. So it's essentially just a measure of how frequently they say something false. Okay, so let's start with the Greens and Annemi Paul. So I'm not sure if it's true, if she had to crawl her way through broken glass to get here. I'm kidding. That's something that she said in the debate. But you actually fact-checked her earlier in the campaign. How did she do? She made the fewest false claims out of all the leaders and the fewest stretches, but she did speak for the shortest amount of time. So her dishonesty density was a bit higher than Trudeau's, who came out on top. She actually only made two distinct false claims because one of them she repeated three times. But her biggest blunder was calling for an emergency recall of parliament to discuss the situation in Afghanistan. Constitutional experts told us that that actually wasn't possible. Basically because the election had been called, right? Yeah. Once parliament has been dissolved, it can't be recalled. Here's one claim that Paul made that you fact-checked. The jobs in the green economy, many of them go directly to people in the fossil fuel sector. They don't need years of retraining. The jobs pay more money. They're more stable. Half of the people working in the green economy only have a high school diploma. This was a stretch, right? Yeah. After speaking to experts, I felt like some of the statement was a bit misleading or overly simplistic. Jobs in the clean technology sector They do pay better than most, so she is partially right. But unfortunately, they're not likely to be more lucrative than jobs in the fossil fuel sector, which is a very high-paying industry. Experts also told me that even green jobs with similar equipment and techniques to a job in the fossil fuel sector will require some retraining. So it's not quite as simple as she says it might be. But that said, there were elements of truth to this claim. Green jobs are high paying, as I said. They are more stable. And the point on education requirements that she made is also true. So I deem this one a stretch. Let's move on to Jagmeet Singh. So one of the things that he did was take a lot of the credit for the government's pandemic measures. And in terms of your fact check, should I call him Mr. Stretch? Very clever. Jagmeet Singh did stretch the truth by far the most out of any leader. I counted 13 stretches, which by comparison is more than twice as many as Trudeau and O'Toole. Now, here's a clip of one of the things that you called him on. 
for each family in Canada, a universal pharmacare would save them on average $500 a month. That's whether or not they have coverage right now or if they don't have coverage. People would save at least $500 a month per family. And for many families, it would be thousands of dollars a month. As a man with a family, this sounds awesome, but a little too good to be true. Yeah, so I think it's pretty fair to say this was an example of a false claim that was probably just a mistake on his part because Singh's own platform claims that Canadians on private drug coverage will save an average of just over $500 a year, which is also supported by other reports on universal pharmacare. So I think it's fair to say that he misspoke when he said $500 a month, but all the same, that's still misinformation, so it's important to correct it. Okay. On to Aaron O'Toole of the Conservatives, who has been riding a wave of support throughout this campaign. But one thing he has been is very careful. And in some ways, he's been trying to dodge some questions. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I think the dodge that will stand out the most everyone was that kind of flip-flop he had on assault weapons. So during the French TVA debate, he said he'd maintain a ban on assault weapons, which confused people a bit because his own platform says that he will repeal the Liberals' recent ban on assault-style firearms. And then in the following days after, it became even more confusing because he dodged questions from journalists about whether he was referring to the Liberals executive order from May 2020 or another law from 1977 that prohibited fully automatic firearms. And it wasn't until about three days later that he finally corrected the record and clarified that he would actually keep Trudeau's ban in place, which goes against his own platform and then also promises he's made in the past to the gun lobby. To be clear, all the party leaders dodge questions, and a lot of times they employ the tactic of answering a journalist question without actually answering the journalist questions, right? Yeah, I would say that's definitely fair. I think this one just stood out because it really contradicted something that was in writing in his own platform. And then for so many days after, his comments on it were still just so vague and people didn't understand what the true position was. One of the claims that Mr. O'Toole made was this. The Liberals and the NDP don't realize that costs are skyrocketing for families as they see their wages shrinking. And how did you judge that claim? Well, it's definitely true that costs are rising as a result of disruptions in supply chains, the labor shortage, and then also just price adjustments coming after last year's recession. But it is false to say that wages are shrinking, at least on average, despite a lot of variability over the past year. Average wages have been higher compared to before the pandemic every month so far this year. So for example, the average hourly wage in July was $29.59 compared to $27.71 in July 2019. We'll be right back. Lastly, we have the incumbent, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. He's your most recent fact check. And since he also had to speak in the debates when you covered him, there was a lot more to actually fact check. How did he do? Yeah, so because we had both the English and the French debate last week, he had to speak quite a lot more off the cuff than some of the leaders in previous weeks I've checked. I counted five false claims for him, six stretches, dishonesty density of about one false claim for every 50 minutes. So by comparison, I counted for O'Toole, one false claim every 30 minutes, one every 47 minutes for Annamie Paul, and one every 46 minutes for Jagmeet Singh. So Trudeau's dishonesty density was the best, but overall, all the politicians are fairly evenly matched, so that's worth saying. But there definitely were a few false claims that were notable. So one in particular, I think he had to answer a lot of tough questions about his record, of course, as the incumbent. And so there were times where he overstated his record or he got into a bit of trouble when he was trying to explain why his party hasn't delivered on some of their promises. So an example of this is he said that he had signed a deal with Prince Edward Island that was a national universal pharmacare first step. So in that instance, I called it a stretch because he did acknowledge that crucial wording of first step. But on another occasion, he didn't add that part and he just called it a national universal pharmacare deal. Of course, it's not national because it's with PEI, but it's also not universal because while it will reduce the cost for people on public drug coverage, it doesn't expand to people who aren't on that plan. 
There was also a confusing math moment in the debates where Trudeau had to clarify because he was being attacked because the Liberals have not met their emissions targets but are on pace to surpass them. Trudeau always forgets one fact. He has never made a target for climate change. He has great ambition. That's part of the reason we're in an election in a pandemic is his ambition. He doesn't have achievement. One of the facts I need to correct right now that everyone is laid into is we have not missed any of our targets. We are on track to exceeding our targets. Can you explain a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, I think that's a tricky one. It's true that he hasn't hit a target so far. Canada's actually never hit a target. But of course, in the realm of climate targets, six years is not a lot of time to set a target and then pass it. It is true what he's saying that we are on track to hit the 2030 target that was set in Paris, which is a reduction of 30% below 2005 emissions. And I think we're on track to surpass that, actually. So it'll be 36% below 2005. So I read all these pieces, and Lex, it feels to me that even in a campaign, the leaders of these parties tend to be pretty honest, right? What do you think that says about the health of our democracy? Yeah, I would say so. I mean, I think overall, I didn't see a lot of examples of leaders lying in a way that felt super malicious. There were definitely examples of people particularly misrepresenting other parties' platforms in a way that was probably intentional. But for the most part, many of the false claims that I checked actually seemed more like slip-ups. So it wasn't like the kind of outright lying and making stuff up out of thin air that we see with someone like Donald Trump. I don't really know why that is. I mean, I think Donald Trump was definitely a bit of an anomaly. I think also once someone starts lying like that, it becomes easier for them to continue lying because the standards decrease a bit. I think it does bode well for our democracy, of course, that our politicians are largely truthful. I think it could be an example of things like this, holding them to account, although there's lots of great fact checkers in the US who have really huge jobs checking people like Donald Trump. So I don't have a good answer for you on that, to be honest, but I am happy to report that our politicians are largely truthful. Obviously, we've seen the U.S. under Donald Trump. As a comparison, how do the leaders you checked stack up to him? Our leaders have nothing on Donald Trump. So Daniel Dale, the star's former fact checker, on one occasion counted 60 false claims in just a two-hour speech from Trump. So just to remind everyone, I was talking about like seven false claims in a week at most. For most, less than that. Annamie Paul had just four That's obviously just like on a completely different scale. That's just dishonesty. Like I didn't see it all here. What was the hardest thing about this project? Were there any truly weird or outlandish things that made you go, I can't believe I have to call someone and ask about this? It was a very challenging project. I learned a lot about issues affecting Canadians, things like fossil fuel subsidies, inflation, the roots of our affordable housing crisis. I'd say the hardest part was probably trying to fact check claims that didn't maybe have a clear answer. A lot of things aren't black and white. And in those cases, I called as many experts as I could. And then I wrote as nuanced a fact check as possible. To be clear, we didn't call anything false unless we were absolutely sure. And that was a really big part of why we had that middle ground to call something a stretch. In terms of anything super outlandish, honestly, as I said, our leaders don't really make stuff up out of thin air like Trump did and does, I guess. And so their claims tended to have at least have something to do with matters of substance. So I remember there was that one example of Trump where he made up this call that he had with the Boy Scouts where they told him he was so amazing. And then Daniel had to actually call the Boy Scouts and ask them if that was true. And of course it wasn't. Or his lies, for example, about the size of his inauguration crowd. It might have been more fun for me if there were some of those, but probably better for Canadians that there weren't. As a fellow Indian Canadian, I'm not sure that Jagmeet Singh's Punjabi poutine actually qualifies as poutine. But that's just one man's opinion. What do you think about that? I'm going to say that's uncheckable. (laughs) Lex, this has been great for us. Is there anything that I didn't ask that you think our listeners should know? Yeah, I guess I would just reiterate that for every false claim or stretch I caught, there were so many more that were true. In terms of the number of false claims, again, per leader, it ranged from four to seven in a week. That's not a huge range as well. So I think it's important to listen carefully, of course, to politicians and not believe everything you hear. And we have evidence that not everything they say is completely in line with the truth. But I think at the end of the day, my findings reflect well on Canadian politics. Well, Lex, that's a positive note as we get very, very close to Election Day. 
Really, really want to thank you for your time today and your work. Thanks so much. Love being here. Lex Harvey has been reporting for The Star and for the past month has been fact-checking the party leaders on the campaign trail. That's it for today. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm your host, Raju Mudder. Our This Matters team is Adrian Chung, Brian Bradley, JP Fozo, Matt Hearn, Morgan Bockneck, Saba Etizaz, and Sean Pattenden. Our music is by so-called Mike DeAngelis and Sean Pattenden. We want to hear what stories matter to you. Please send us comments, questions, or ideas to thismatters at thestar.ca. Please consider supporting the journalism the Toronto Star Newsroom does at thestar.com slash subscribing matters. And don't forget to subscribe to This Matters on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. Let's talk soon. <laughs>